Hello everyone and welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Josh, joined today by the man who plays everything, Scott Tailford. Ooh. Hello. Because it's a very special episode as you have been playing the PlayStation 5 pretty much all night. It's there, mate. It's right there. It's it right actually there. exists and is in your hands. <laughs> Obviously, a bunch of stuff is under embargo, but today, apparently, you're going to talk me through, Scott Tailford, exactly what the mm. dual sense is, your first impressions, and a little tease of a particular level in Astro's Playroom. I am very excited to live vicariously through you, so I'm going to just stop talking, <laughs> and I want you to tell me everything, everything about your experience. Well, so this thing, the way that the all of the embargo stuff works is I can't do like full on, oh my God, this is how it interacts with everything until nearer launch, but I can talk about the dual sense through the lens of this one level in Astro's Playroom. So I thought that was a nice excuse to just sort of talk about what it's like getting hands on with the dual sense. Um, and just talking about the features that they've been teasing as of even that interview with Wired Goods, whatever that was last year or Ages something. Ages ago. Um, the whole, you know, when Mark Cerny started describing, you know, haptic triggers and different motors and that idea of, you know, you're going to be able to tell if you're walking on sand or if you're walking on snow or ice or whatever, that all of that would come through in the controller. I was incredibly skeptical about that stuff. Mm. Um, and I don't think that it makes you feel like you're on ice or anything like that. Um, but I will say that like, because I've, I've got some things that I want to break down. Mainly, um, I guess we should start with the, the motor stuff. The fact that it does, uh, inside the controller, it does try to replicate whatever you're standing on. Um, now, like I said, all of this stuff is viewed through the lens of the cooling springs level, which is the one level I can talk about from Astro's Playroom. Um, but that is one of the um, most gorgeous looking levels anyway. Anyway, we'll put some footage up of, up of it um, and it does mean that you know right at the beginning you drop into some water and then you go onto the beach and you're running around on sand but you can also jump onto some wooden planks and different um, you know surfaces that you're running around there's also like a really super clean plasticky room on the inside um, and when you're going between them the way that it tries to like sort of mimic textures is kind of fascinating mm. um, because the way that it does something like sand is you'll kind of get like a low rumble in the background and it, under, like, underneath inside the controller with sort of little pockets of like sort of miniature vibration vibrations around the controller elsewhere to try and simulate, I guess, the feeling of feet going in and out of sand, um, which is really weird. Um, and then when you jump into some water, like as the sort of buoyancy of the water kicks in, the whole pad kind of does like a like a deeper rumble um, and then settles into a completely different rhythm altogether. It's really, really weird. And obviously it's quite hard to describe vibrations, but I can see exactly what they're going for. Um, and I think that side of it's really cool. Um, and like I said, when you're running on like a super clean, smooth surface, it, everything kind of gets sharp you kind of get lots of little mini micro vibrations because Astro's feet are sort of like tip tapping on like a cleaner surface yeah um, and everything in the controller starts to feel like I said sharper and it sort of stands out that way and um, that side of it is really really cool and um, it makes me wonder how many other devs can actually do stuff with it obviously it's been made it's been geared towards Astro but if you were kind of wondering what the the realistic the actual reality of them implementing this stuff um, you know obviously on the PR side it's going to be like it's going to feel like you're on the sand yourself mm -hmm. and you're not but right. it, I, they've done a pretty damn good job with it. Um, I do have more stuff to sort of um, break down, but what, did you have any questions about the way the motors work? Well, essentially, you know, you can do your best to describe it there, but I have no idea what <laughs> most of that means until I have it in my hands. No. What I will argue though, well, what, what I will ask is, has it mm -hmm. like sold you on like the whole idea when you pick it up? I've seen a lot of reports from people, journalists who have it saying like, I am now a believer. I wasn't a believer before I've played this level and now this has, oh, it almost feels like a next gen sort of game changer like would I you saw um I saw, J I, mean, I saw Jason Trier's thing of like, oh my God, this is the most mm. next-gen feeling thing. And to be honest, no, not on the level I'm allowed to talk about. Mm. However, um, and I can't go into any detail on this, there were other things that came along that made me just go, okay, okay, that's great. Cool. Um, but I can't talk about that. Um, not really. And so um, if I was basing it entirely off the Cooling Spring stuff, I would still come away with it sort of sitting in the, the, the gimmicky-ish category. Like, it's impressive. Um, and I like what they've done. But obviously, Astro is a first-party game. It's made to sell the PS5. It's made to sell this controller. Yeah. Um, in regards to what this thing is capable of. Um, and so it started reminding me of things like, you know, Switch HD rumble of the uh, Xbox One's uh, rumble triggers, things that we're told early in a console cycle will like change everything. Um, and obviously it's it's gonna be up to every other dev to, to run with it. But even in the case of those two examples that I just gave, like they, those were barely used even in first party titles going forward. Like uh, Microsoft kept the, the rumble trigger stuff in Forza and, but I mean, Nintendo pretty much abandoned HD rumble. Like it's in there, but nowhere near as, as depth um, you know, to what they're trying to do with it as it was in something like 1-2 Switch. Um, I did want to talk about the haptic triggers though mm -hmm. um, because that's that'll be one of the things that really convinces a lot of people and I think that stuff is, uh, the haptic trigger stuff is what um, is really feels game changing because 
they have done the thing that I thought the rumble triggers were going to do on the Xbox, um, where the trigger itself does fight you when you push it down. It is harder to push things down depending on the context that's on screen. Um, so. Some of the footage that we can show is uh, one bit from the Cooling Springs level where uh, Astro jumps in like a springy suit and he's like bouncing around on this level. Cool. And to try and simulate the idea of depressing a spring, uh, pushing the trigger down is just harder, um, which does mean <laughs> that when you let off it, there's like that pop that you would get if you were letting go of something that had tension build up inside of it, um, which is just a whole new sensation for a controller. Um, and like I said, again, they do better things with this in other levels, but the one that they do in the Cooling Spring thing um, was the first time I was like, oh, okay, like they've actually done it they have made you know the triggers respond be harder to push down nice. have more satisfaction in the way that they feel you know um considering that we're coming from the legacy of like spongy ps3 triggers to like the ps4 sort of refining them a lot more um this feels like it's really weird because you it, obviously one of the, the controllers turned off there's one sense to how soft it is and then once you're in game every individual context is is changing based on the way that you're running through different parts and stuff so i think that stuff's really really cool how um nuanced have you found it you know is it a case of it has mm. just a you know a set amount of settings or can you can it really be tweaked depending on what's going on in the title at least from the level you've played like does it feel like there's a lot of mm. variance in what those triggers can do or will, is it just going to be a kind of preset of 10 sort of um, things that it can achieve it's not, and then it, it every game like recycles them yeah, it seems like there is like a full, like, you know, you're, I guess on the dev side, they're mapping like the whole yaw of like the, I think it's called yaw, like the whole, you know, how far you can depress a, a trigger, like, yeah. you know, from top to bottom. And um, they're mapping that entire gradient to like in game actions or whatever. At least that's what it feels like. Um, because you can just squeeze the controller slowly, watch the animation play out a lot slower. Um, and I, I just have to assume that they would map that in more like cool ways going forward. Because um, the tech itself, like, you know, is pretty robust. Like, I mean, like I said, the only example that comes through in the Cooling Springs thing, uh, for the most part, is this the thing where you actually are being a spring and you're bouncing around everywhere. But it is cool. I like the idea that they've sort of like had, you know, they've put the tension into the feel of the controller. Like all of a sudden it feels like, it feels tougher. Like, you know, when you get like mm -hmm. an older broken controller <laughs> in regards to, you know, it's harder to push down. And um, they're simulating that with, it's to try and give you a feeling of like, okay, you are in control of something else, like this other being. Um, and it makes me wonder like, you know, in platformers or in shooters and stuff like that, like weapons assumedly will feel different, which is what they were sort of touting, that a shotgun would feel different yeah. to a machine gun and things like that um, and I love the application of it or the idea of the application of it in shooters um, that like pulling a shotgun trigger might sort of stop halfway back and then pull it again which I guess Insomniac have kind of teased with Ratchet and Clank mm -hmm. um, but yeah that stuff was really really cool another thing is that all the the, uh, the motors that I mentioned before, something else that kind of got me a bit was um, when you run into one part of the level, you run it directly into some fans um, and uh, all of the, the wind that's coming at you, if you move the camera um, to sort of simulate the direction the wind is still coming at Astro, um, that moves through the motors which is really weird because um, it's they're trying to show you like you know all the motors at the top of the controller are yeah. vibrating because the wind's coming at you from the front um, as you rotate the uh, the camera all of those motor motors shift um, and I don't know how many motors are inside the, the dual sense but there's enough so that it feels like this entire sort of sensation is moving through the controller um, like again it's potentially hard to describe but that was something where I was like okay that's really really cool and I get that that plays into the whole you know making you feel like you've got uh, it's replicating various contexts or imagery or whatever on screen so that's another cool thing too. It's so funny, man. Like you're describing all of this to me and just from like the secondhand <laughs> descriptors, like I'm getting excited for it because I think me right. more so than you perhaps gets, I, I, I love like these controller gimmicks. You know, you mentioned a bunch of different <laughs> features there from different consoles mm -hmm. and every single time they've always excited me. I remember being really stressed yeah. out in 2013 that um, Xbox had those kind of vibrating triggers and PlayStation didn't. Like that was something I took into consideration so much, even though mm. it barely got used when it comes to the DualShock 4 like the lights on the, the like the light bar you know the the uh, the touchpad and stuff like that <laughs> even though bar. it wasn't necessarily implemented as much as it probably should have been both those features like I mm -hmm. still love that they're there I, I love a control gimmick and it sounds like this is the most they've sort of gone all in on it like this isn't like the six axis mm. at the six axis you know this isn't something that's completely a gimmick this seems like something that is mm -hmm. can be used in a myriad of different ways and in nuanced ways like the idea of those triggers man like that's the thing that appeals to me so much having the mm. string of a bow and arrow kind of like get more tense the the further you pull it back or like you said like the springs in your jump and stuff it just adds to mm -hmm. or it sounds like it adds to a level of immersion that 
I've always wanted out of a controller because obviously a controller is something mm -hmm. where you want ultimate control over what's happening on screen and this sounds at least if it's implemented on this level in at least the first party games will give the mm -hmm. player that sort of extra level of control of the character which should hopefully lead to more immersive play hopefully it extends beyond you know this demo and is adopted by a widespread amount of developers mm. You would hope, like you said, with the, the bowstring stuff, you would hope that Horizon has this front and center, like yeah. the idea of pulling back the bow as Aloy, Aloy that the, the controller should kind of fight you. Maybe they could fight you in different ways in terms of the tension based on upgrading bows. If you get better, it would be easier to pull the controller, to pull the trigger down and things like that. Um, two other things I wanted to mention. Uh, one is that um, you do an animation in this level where you're sort of pulling these big cables back um, and the controller like um, vibrates in different, um, I'm going to say depths. It's like sort of like a, a bassier sort of vibration to kind of simulate that you're pulling this thing back more and more. <laughs> Um, which goes alongside the uh, the microphone that's built into it. I thought that was a cool way to simulate tension and um, the idea of like, you know, like I said, pulling something back in a level. And um, the other thing is uh, at one point you have to um, get on this iceberg and sort of uh, go down this big river. Um, but to get some acceleration, you actually blow into the controller. <laughs> it's probably like Nintendo style. Um, where you just, yeah, you blow into the microphone and uh, and that like obviously simulates like this fan <laughs> thing on screen. The whole sensibility with Astro though, at least that comes through in this level, is full on Nintendo style. Like they're full yeah. on, they've, Sony have realized that they have a legacy to be proud of. They're 25 plus years in um, and you know, they might as well just, uh, just embrace this stuff. Um, and just sort of like make this little, this lovable mascot that they've tried to get off the ground a couple of times before um, and, and just kind of like embrace that stuff. I can't talk about more specifics as to what Astro is overall, <laughs> like what that game is really about and what you're doing and whatever. Um, that's the thing that really made me love it. However, um, the stuff that they've put together, even in this Cooling Springs thing, like you said before, is promising for the future. Um, it is up against the fact that, it, you know, we've had all these other controller gimmicks in the past, but I'm totally with you. Like I love progression in a medium. So if anyone can do anything with this, the thing is, as I was playing this, I was like, I wonder what Hideo Kojima will do with this hmm. because he'll be the sort of person that will think of something that no one else would. Um, like maybe the controller is possessed or the thing you're holding as a character is possessed and it's fighting you and whatever else. I just think that someone like Kojima or Suda51 um, or Yoko Taro or any of those sort of like, you know, more conceptual uh, designers, they'll think of stuff that'll be really, really cool. I mean, um, but overall though, yeah. super promising. I mean, I remember when, um, it's completely barely even a gimmick, but I remember when I was playing Until Dawn and you get to one of the um, mm. missions late in the game where you have to hold the controller still to like hide from the enemies. Yes. And I, that blew my it's mind funny. back in the day. So we get any applications <laughs> like that or similar to that, where you just, it puts you in the moment that little bit more and does things with the controller in a in a interesting and out of the box way. Like I'm totally here for that. Even if I'm here on launch day, blowing into this dual sense controller and everyone's looking at me thinking, <laughs> I'm a total fool. Like I'm, I'm here for I'm that. Making the fans work, mate. No. <laughs> I've got to know, mate. I've got to, I've got to know. Is there Good anything work. else um, you want to touch on before we sign off? There I is do, not. I, there is not for now. I do want to know if you can tell me, just away from all of mm -hmm. the fancy features and stuff, just ergonomically and how the controller itself feels in your hands. Like obviously, it seems a bit bulkier mm -hmm. than the DualShock Four. Like, is it a positive step forward in terms of you know pure physicality? Like. I, uh, I know that they definitely don't want specifics in regards to anything other than talking Excellent. about the DualSense through this level. But I will say that while I was holding the controller playing this level, um, it very much felt um, satisfying. I think that there's so much more to talk about and I'm gonna do, we're, we're gonna have way more stuff in the lead up to launch, yep. um, and including something, um, yeah, mm. like I said, in the lead up to launch. Um, but yeah, it's a very satisfying controller. Um, I think right now, just because of the sheer amount of time I've spent with the DualShock 4, I prefer that, but I think the DualSense, like it, we'll see. Um, they've taken a lot of risks with it. Well, they've taken a lot of ambitious steps with it. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of stuff built into it that sort of, it all factors into what it feels like to hold. And obviously my main experience with it-ish um, for now in regards to which game I'm playing has been Astro. Um, and I think that that, like, it is all part of the package. It kind of, it's not gimmicky necessarily. It's just that all the stuff they're selling is directly through Astro. So you would start associating, you know, your first hands on time with this controller, with this game that's very much, you know, made up of individual, you know, like the, the motors and the haptic triggers and the, all that sort of stuff. It, it feels like 
like this controller built for a specific experience. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious just what it feels like applied to everything else. Um, but yeah, super promising. I think um, I'm, I'm, I'm dying to talk about everything else, basically. <laughs> um, but the stuff that they've, they've let me talk about for now um, is good. So yeah. I'm looking forward to, forward to it too, Scott Hill. And I'm looking forward to more Astro, like you said. <laughs> like I hope they build them up as a proper mascot because the VR stuff mm. he was involved with previously, like it's all been such a high quality, high level of quality. And I want this game, especially to be good and to be experienced by everyone. But yes, I'm super excited to get my hands on the DualSense myself. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Have you found this video incredibly informative? Are you looking forward to the features on the DualSense? And are you looking forward to getting your hands on Astro's Playroom itself as a game that I think is on every console when you- It is, it's up. built in. Yeah, built in at mm -hmm. launch. So yeah, let us know down in the comments while you're there. Can you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Like Scott said, we're gonna have so much more PS5 related content over the coming weeks and into next month as the launch date gets ever so close. But until then, I've been Josh, joined by Scott, and we'll see you soon. I've been Scott. We'll catch oh, you next there time. There it is again. Beautiful. Ha, ha, ha.